in three days at 2 or 5 p.m. there will be a 6.5 earthquake similar to the 2003 San Simeon earthquake in Paso Robles that killed two or the 1925 Santa Barbara quake that killed 13. During the shaking, we will find it difficult to stand. Furniture will be overturned, shelves will be emptied, computers will be tossed, and many windows will break. Older structures in town will partially collapse and sustain considerable damage. Large cracks in streets will open up, a rock fall will occur on Custer Grade, highway bridges will collapse, power lines will be damaged, and most of the county will be without power. Most cell sites will be down and the rest overloaded by use. There will be structure fires and the low water pressure from the damaged water system will allow the fires to keep spreading to adjoining buildings. There will be partial building collapses downtown and some people will be buried under the rubble. Our hospital emergency rooms will be inundated with traumatic injuries. Schools will be making sure our children are safe and accounted for. The city and the county will both declare an emergency and request assistance from the state. So how are you feeling? Are you ready? Probably not. But wait, it's in three days from now. We have time to plan and get ready. First, we need to think about Mavlov's hierarchy of needs, food, water, warmth, rest, security, and safety. We need to do that for ourselves, our families, and our employees. If we are in a position where people are depending on us, such as hotel guests, hospital patients, students, prisoners, and the elderly, we need to be ready to continue that care after the emergency. How about neighbors who will need our help? Let's start by making sure our three-day emergency kits are ready and they can support all the folks who depend on us. If you want to know what should be in those kits, we've left some checklists from our city fire department. Thank you, James, uh, out on the back. We need to show our employees that we are there for them and they will in turn show they are there for us. We need to make positive contact with them, even if it means going to their home or the evacuation center to find them. Do they need housing, food, safety, or cash? Is it your plan to invite them to come and camp at the office, your home, or will you put them in a safe hotel? How will you take care of them, their families, and their pets? Let's go back to work today and begin making a confidential emergency contact list. Have you ever practiced a take cover, evacuation, or an active shooter drill at your business? Let's do that too. Today, let's send an email to all our staff, encourage them to sign up for reverse 911 emergency notifications at slowsheriff.org. When you get home tonight, go out in the garage and make sure you know how to open the door if the power's out. And if you don't, like everything, there's a how-to YouTube video. Heck, I will even come out and show you. Let's go back to our businesses' homes and take a video of each room and its contents and store that recording on a cloud so that we can show it to our insurance adjusters. This might be a good time to make sure we are adequately insured. Once we are safe and secure in a disaster, we will need to secure our businesses and get them open quickly, especially if we provide an important service. We will need to decide, can I safely clean up the debris? Were there hazardous materials that were spilled? To make sure we get help from our insurance companies and FEMA and SBA support, we need to take lots of pictures of the damage and our cleanup efforts. Let's decide now what our most critical business functions are so we know where to begin our recovery. Is it your inventory and supply chain? Do you have critical machinery that you need to keep running? Can you secure your computer system to handle shaking or a fire? Is it your credit card reader? Is the most important thing to get your employees back to work quickly? What do we need to reopen? When it comes time to hire contractors, remember, if it's too good to be true, it probably is. Let's plan to use contractors we know. If you want to make donations, collect donations, or volunteer to help, let's use established organizations who already know how to do this. Most of them are in this room. Red Cross, United Way, San Luis Community Foundation, Capslow, Food Bank, Heat, Woods, Hospice, and your religious congregation, to name a few local ones. How about at your staff meeting tomorrow? For both your in-person staff and your Zoom staff, simply put on the agenda, Open discussion on what we would do if there was emergency in three days. And finally, let's make a commitment today that no matter what happens in three days or in three years, we will be survivors and not victims. That we will take on a survivor attitude that no matter how hard things get, we will strive to get through it and rebuild our lives and businesses and we will do it together.